Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. Parliament has passed a resolution declaring Russia as a state that sponsors terrorism. The resolution states that Russia systematically violates human rights, international law and the United Nations Charter. The bill included an amendment on the Smolensk catastrophe submitted by senior speaker Antony Macharevich. Two Confederation deputies voted against it. The opposition did not take part in the vote. The resolution includes an amendment recognizing Russia as a country directly responsible for the Smolensk tragedy of the 10th of April 2010. The Russian Federation is directly responsible for the downing of a Malaysian Airlines plane flight MH17 in July 2014 when 298 passengers and crew members were killed and for the crash of Polish Air Force plane flight 101 in Smolensk, Russia in April 2010 which killed 96 people on board including Polish President Lech Kaczynski, Polish government officials, senior Polish Army and NATO commanders and members of the Polish Parliament. At the previous session, opposition deputies pulled the ballots, consequently breaking the quorum and preventing the resolution from being voted on. Yesterday, 231 deputies were in favour of the resolution declaring Russia a state sponsoring terrorism. The opposition again failed to participate in the vote. 234 deputies voted, 231 voted in favour, two voted against and one abstained. The same passed the resolution. According to the chairman of the Smolensk Commission, Antony Macharevich, the same resolution breaks the previous lies about Smolensk supported by the civil platform party. The international importance of this is also enormous because it shows that we are aware that the Smolensk attack was the first terrorist attack on a NATO state, on a European Union state. Under the PO, PSL government, former Prime Minister Donald Tusk sought to sign an unfavorable gas deal with Russia for more than a quarter of a century. What is unheard of is not only that the entire opposition, 100% of the opposition, was unable to blame Putin and Russia for what is obvious, the involvement in the Smolensk affair, but also the Confederation calling itself patriotic, pretending to be nationalist, probably Russian. On this issue, they did not want to vote and support Russia's responsibility. Although also in the Confederation are people who made a career, made films even showing Russian responsibility. This is unheard of. Although the adoption of this resolution will not contribute to legal consequences against Russia, it will, according to attorney Lech Obara, directly affect the perception of this tragedy by Warsaw's foreign partners. There is a legal principle that the state, including the Russian state undoubtedly, is responsible for the negligence, especially intentional negligence, of its officials. And let us recall that such functionaries were the flight controllers from the Smolensk airport. A few months ago, a Polish court unequivocally recognized that the negligence of the flight controllers was intentional. Less than a month ago, the European Parliament also recognized Russia as a state sponsoring terrorism. The resolution states, among other things, that Russia continues to deny its responsibility for the downing of the Malaysian Airlines plane over eastern Ukraine in 2014 and refuses to return the wreckage and black boxes of the Polish government's TU-154 plane. Today, the first reading of the amendment to the law on the Supreme Court was due to take place in the same, but it was removed from the agenda at the suggestion of President Andrzej Duda. The proposal is the result of talks between the government and Brussels, and the adoption of the amendment is designed to meet a milestone that will allow Poland to receive funds from the National Reconstruction Plan. It transfers disciplinary proceedings from the Supreme Court to the Supreme Administrative Court. Solidarna Polska is against it. President Andrzej Duda has conveyed that he was not involved in the compromise with the European Union. He also announced that he would check whether the proposed changes comply with the Polish constitution. 3,000 members of the judiciary have received their judicial nominations in recent years. I will not allow any legislation to be introduced into the Polish legal system that will undermine these judicial legitimacies. Minister for European Affairs Szymon szynkowski velsonk gave assurances of his readiness to cooperate with the head of state. We welcome the position of Mr. President Andrzej Duda regarding changes in the judiciary. I want to say that I will engage with Mr. President to have detailed access to information on the law on the Supreme Court. The draft amendment to the law on the Supreme Court is criticised by Solidarity Poland. Bignev Jobra's environment fears a loss of sovereignty for our country and asks for a meeting with Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki. First, that it violates the Polish constitution on many points. Second, that it interferes deeply with Polish sovereignty. And third, it would cause, as a consequence, a far 
far-reaching disorganization of the Polish judiciary. Emotions are being toned down by Deputy Prime Minister Jacek Sasin. Today, I think the worst solution will be to say no because no, that we are not ready to compromise even one step. Poles simply expect this compromise from us, and we are ready for this compromise, although it is difficult. The compromise worked out with Brussels stipulates that disciplinary cases will be taken over by the Supreme Administrative Court rather than the Professional Responsibility Chamber, which replaced the Supreme Court's disciplinary chamber, as was the case until now. The realization of this proposal is a key condition for the disbursement of European Union funds to Poland. Since we do not have to this day diversification of funding sources outside of the European Union, this knife at our throat makes our ability to decide solely on systemic solutions to what is happening in the judiciary very limited. The European Commission approved Poland's national reconstruction plan in June. Despite this, Poland has still not received its due funds. Poland is awaiting the disbursement of nearly 24 billion euro in grants and 11.5 billion euro in loans under the reconstruction fund. Day 295 of the war in Ukraine. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said that significant progress has been made this week on the issue concerning air defence. The authorities are doing everything to acquire the most modern systems. Meanwhile, fierce fighting continues in the Donbass, he said. Russian shelling of Kherson killed two people today. There is no calm on the front line. There is nothing easy and simple. Every day and every meter is extremely hard, and especially where the whole tactics of the occupiers are boiled down to the destruction of everything in sight by artillery, so that only bare ruins and craters in the ground remain. Today, 64 Ukrainians were returned from Russian captivity, 64 warriors, four officers and 60 privates and sergeants. Among them, there are seriously wounded. We are providing proper assistance to all of them. Zelensky opposed the idea of Russian athletes taking part under any kind of neutral banner at the 2024 Summer Olympics. No one will turn a blind eye to any attempts to reduce international pressure on the source of the war when we receive receive such reports as today from Kherson, where another Russian shelling killed a child, a boy. He was eight years old. We can say only one thing. A white or any other neutral flag is impossible for Russian athletes. All their flags are stained with blood. Pro-Russian officials blamed Ukrainian forces for a shelling attack on Donetsk earlier today, which damaged a hospital and an apartment block. They hit the first building three days ago. I don't understand what it's all for. Why? You can't prove anything with this, because those who live in Donbass, who are from Donetsk, are loyal to Donetsk. They are loyal to Russia. It's not going to be any other way. The city in the Russian-controlled territory was subjected to the heaviest shelling in years. Moscow-installed officials said, as both sides ruled out a Christmas truce in the nearly 10-month-old conflict. There was a woman lying here. Just imagine all the debris flying her way. You can see some blood here. She was taken into surgery. They sewed up and bandaged the wound on her leg. I heard a loud rumble, and I saw something like a big fireball falling right in front of the balcony. It all started coming in, onto my bed, glass, bits of bricks, all of it. Earlier today, Russian missiles hit Kharkiv, severely damaging a warehouse, according to Dmitry Chubenko, Kharkiv Region Prosecutor's Office press officer. S-300 missiles were launched from Russia's Belgorod and hit an empty warehouse, Chubenko said. No casualties had been reported. Russia conducts strikes on civilian infrastructure, as you see. The warehouse was completely empty. There was no connection to the military whatsoever. Poland's most senior police officer was injured and taken to hospital when a present he received during a visit to Ukraine exploded at police headquarters in Warsaw. Poland's interior ministry said earlier today. Jarosław Szymczyk, commander-in-chief of the Polish police, received the gift from one of the heads of the Ukrainian emergency services during a visit to the country on December the 11th to the 12th. As a result of the explosion, the commander suffered minor injuries and has been in the hospital for observation since yesterday, a ministry statement said, adding the incident took place yesterday. It was not immediately clear what the present was. The ministry said a civilian employee at police headquarters was also injured but did not need to go to hospital. There was no immediate reply from Ukraine's SBU security service to a Reuters request for comment on the incident. Polish media had earlier reported that an explosion at police headquarters had injured Shimchik and damaged the ceiling of the building. The Polish side asked the Ukrainian side to provide relevant explanations, the ministry said.
That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for the weather, Poland Daily Business and more programmes. Back from Mids, have a good night and a better tomorrow.